The B for a unit is called using biology. The big idea behind most of these topics is that the more we understand how living things work and function, the more we can either alter them or use them for our own purposes. This video is going to look at a few examples of this, all related to plants. We'll look at how plants and animals have co-evolved and how humans can use some of the chemicals that plants have evolved as defense against herbivores. We'll look at how plants can be grown to use as biofuels and some of the advantages and disadvantages of this. And we'll also look at how we can increase the amount of food produced globally in response to an increasing world population. A large number of plants rely on insects and other animals to pollinate them. This is an example of what's known as co-evolution. Insects and plants have evolved together, constantly adapting and changing in response to each other. Insects are attracted to flowers in order to feed on the nectar offered by the plant. In return, they brush against the parts of the flower releasing pollen and transport this pollen to the next flower they visit. The plant benefits from this relationship as it gets its pollen spread, but pays the price of producing nectar to attract the insects. The insects gain the sugar and therefore energy from the nectar, but carrying the pollen slows the insect down and is a cost. There is therefore a benefit to any plant that can attract insects without having to produce nectar, or to an insect that can pick up the nectar without having to pick up the pollen. Two examples of this being done are orchids that have evolved to be a similar shape and colour to a type of wasp, so that male wasps are attracted to it and try to mate with the flower, picking up pollen in the process. Another example is insects that have found ways of accessing the nectar through the back of a flower, avoiding the pollen altogether. Another example of plant-animal co-evolution is how herbivores and plants have evolved together. Plants have evolved a range of strategies to prevent herbivores feeding on them, including thorns, growing tall, and also producing toxins that affect the animals. Animals may then evolve ways of metabolizing these chemicals so that they're not affected by them. Kangaroos, for example, have evolved the enzymes needed to break down the poison produced by several different plants native in Australia, giving them a huge advantage over other herbivores living in the area. Plants can also produce chemicals to defend themselves against pathogens such as fungi. Some of these chemicals are also poisonous to humans, but they can sometimes have some useful effects when used in small amounts. For example, Quinine is used to treat malaria and aspirin is used to relieve pain and fever. In the future, more of these poisonous chemicals are likely to be put to use in treatments for diseases such as cancer. The majority of the world's energy demands from fuel are currently met by burning fossil fuels. The problems with these fuels are that they are set to become increasingly scarce and so more expensive, and also that burning them releases carbon dioxide which contributes to global warming. Several alternatives have been introduced, one of which is the use of biofuels. This is where a crop is grown with the intention of using it as a fuel rather than a food. Examples include elephant grass and oil palm trees. One of the advantages of these crops is that they're renewable. The crops grow quickly, so they can be produced year after year. They're also known as carbon neutral. The carbon dioxide produced when they're burnt balances out the carbon dioxide that they absorbed through photosynthesis when they were growing. One of the big problems of these crops, however, is that they take up land that could be used for growing crops for food. This is an increasingly important issue, as while the growing world population is leading to an increased demand for fuels, it's also creating an increasing demand for food. So, if biofuels are actually reducing the amount of food that can be produced, let's look at some ways that our understanding of biology is allowing us to produce more food. Since the start of agriculture, plants have been bred using artificial selection to produce higher yields. This is known as conventional breeding, and it's where the individual plants producing the most grain are selected and bred together. When this is repeated many times, the overall yield of the crop gradually increases. It's a reliable but relatively slow strategy for increasing food production. Another way of increasing the amount of food being produced is to reduce the amount lost to pests. A system known as integrated pest management brings together a range of strategies all with this aim. 
Firstly, the natural predators such as hoverflies and beetles that feed on the pest insects are attracted into the fields, for example by having banks of wild flowers around the border. If levels of pests get too high, pesticides can be sprayed to kill them, but these chemicals may also kill some of the natural predators. Rotating crops so that different species are planted in the same field in a cycle over several years helps avoid pests and pathogens specific to one plant building up to high levels. We've looked in other videos at how genetic modification can be used to introduce genes into plants that will help to increase yields. For example, herbicide resistance so that the farmer can use a spray to remove weeds without damaging the crop. Introducing the Bt toxin gene so that pests are killed without needing to use pesticide sprays that also damage natural predators and so on. In the future, it's likely that more genetically modified crops will be grown. These three strategies together will need to meet the rising demands for food production. So, our understanding of plant biology has led to several uses being developed. By understanding how plants and animals have co-evolved and how plants defend themselves against herbivores and pathogens using toxins has led to several medicines and treatments being developed from these chemicals. Understanding how plants grow has led to the production of biofuels as a carbon neutral renewable alternative to fossil fuels. However, these crops are grown as an alternative to food crops, which is a problem when the growing world population is creating an increased food demand. To meet this demand, conventional breeding, integrated pest management and genetic modification of crops will need to be used.